Hi, and welcome to another video on PolyML. Today we'll be looking at lists and tuples, and some basic functions using both. So first of all, tuples. A tuple is a fixed length group of ordered values. That'll make sense soon enough. A tuple can have two to infinite numbers. So you can have a two tuple, a three tuple, a four tuple, and so on. It's usually referred to however many values, n, you have, it will be an n tuple. Tuples can be built up of any types of values you wish. So it can be an integer, a string, a boolean, a real, character, and so on. These can be all used at the same time in the same tuple. To better show this, let's create a simple tuple now. Let's create one with the value 2 and the word hi. So that creates a tuple of type int star string. That is the Cartesian product of int and string not to be confused with the multiplication symbol. The interesting thing about tuples is that you can also nest them. So if we created another tuple, two, and then created a tuple inside of it with three and four, and then high again, that is a correct tuple. But this time it has int star int int string. You can even go so far as have a tuple of nested tuples. See that is a tuple, int, int, and another tuple, int, int, inside of a tuple. So let's create a simple function using a tuple. This function will just swap x and y around. So we do fun, swap a tuple xy goes to a tuple yx. What this will simply do is just swap the positions of the tuple. So let's test if it works. If we do swap, and then we do high, because it's a tuple, and then two, this should swap them around to the other way in return the result. Yeah. The good thing about tuples is that you can return an indexed value as well. So if we wanted to get the second value from the tuple one, two, three, four, we could just do the hash symbol and a two. This will get you the second value. So if we want to do that again on a different kind of tuple, we can simply do another tuple, the third value, this can be high, then a real, then a normal number, and then another word, and that'll get you the third value, which is the four. Notice how, unlike other index values in other languages, this index system starts at one. So if you want the third value, it does not start at zero, one, two, three. It will be one, two, three. So what do I mean when I say a tuple? is a fixed length group of ordered numbers. Well, by fixed length, I mean that a tuple cannot be changed. It cannot be added to or removed from. A tuple is the value that's that you give the tuple. So in our previous example, the tuple that we had was high, 1.0, 4, and hello. You can take values out and have a look at them, but you do not alter the original tuple. That is its own value. And by ordered group, I mean that a tuple that is of 1, 2 is not the same as a tuple of 2, 1. The order of the values inside the tuple matters as the tuple value. So if we have a tuple 1, 2, that is not the same as a tuple of 2, 1. Tuples are very similar to another part of ML called records. In other languages, a record would be called a dictionary. It is a unordered collection of labeled data values. By unordered, I mean that the values inside of a record may be represented in any order and they will be the same to another record that has the same values in a different order. Unlike how the previous tuple 1, 2 was not equals to a 2, 1, using records they would be the same. To show this, let's create a simple record now. Records are surrounded by braces or curly brackets. So if we have 1, which equals 1, and then we'll have 2, which will equals 2, notice how records can, again, have different values. So let's check if this record is equals to the opposite record. So if we do 2 equals 2, and 1 equals 1, equals to it, because it is the temporary variable holding the previous record, this comes up as true, as it is an unordered list of data values. 
Okay, so let's create a simple function that uses a record. We'll start off with the function command, give it a name first, because we'll just return the first value of the record. And we'll create the record argument here. We'll start off with the label, and then we'll give each label a type. One can be int, two can be string. And then we'll give it what it's going to return, or what the function does. In this instance, we'll just return the first value. So it'll be 1. Notice how this 1 is not the number 1, or the value 1. This is returning whatever value is stored on the label 1. So let's test this by giving it a record. So we type first, and since records are unordered, we can start off with 2 equals high, and then we can give it 1, and then give it any other integer. As long as the types inside of the record match, this should work. There you go. It takes the label 1 and returns the value of the label 1, which is 324. So that is basic tuples and basic records. Let's move on to lists. Okay, so a list is an unordered sequence of similar typed values. By similar typed, I mean a list can only contain one type within itself. So if you have a list of integers, it will be an integer list. If you have a list of reals, it will be a real list. A list cannot contain multiple types of values. To better explain this, let's create a couple of lists now. So if I have the list 1, 2, 3, this will come back as an int list, as it only contains ints. But just like the tuples before, if I did 1 and then the word 2, this will come back as an error, as lists cannot contain multiple types. However, just like tuples, lists can be nested inside themselves. So if I have a list of 1, 2 in a list, inside of a list where it contains 3, 4 as well, that will come back as an int list list, because it's a list of int lists. Unlike tuples where the values inside were 1, 2, 3, the tuple would come back with the type int star int star int, Lists come back with the simple int list, as every value in the list must be of the same type. Lists, just like tuples, can be created using any value you desire. They just must match types. So we can have a 2.0, a 3.4, a 5.7, and this will come back with a real list. A thing to understand about lists is that they can also be empty. So if we create an empty list now, it will come up as an alpha list, as it does not understand what type it'll be. An empty list is also synonymous with nil, which also comes back with the alpha list. Okay, so let's start manipulating the list. And unlike tuples, you can extend and shorten lists themselves, or access and take variables out of it. However, you must think of lists as a stack, where the only directly accessible value is the head of the list, or the top of the stack. The rest of the stack is referred to as the tail. To show this, let's take the list 1, 2, 3. And to access the head from a list, you use the function hd, and then the list, but in this case we'll use the variable it. And that returns 1. If we did tl, which stands for tail, this should return everything behind the head of the list. So this will take 1 away and then it should give us 2, 3, still within a list. And it doesn't. This is because we've overwritten the variable it. This is a good thing to point out because if you are not using saved variable names or functions, you have the chances of overwriting information you've done beforehand. So it's always good practice to try and save functions under names instead of relying on the temporary it value, as you can override it, as I've just done. So let's go back to showing what the tail does. If we have the list, one, two, three, back into the temporary it variable, we can now do tl onto that list, which returns two, three. To make it more clear, we can just use a list in itself. So if we do four, five, six in the list, under the tail value, it should come back with five, six. Note that this is not doing something to the list itself. This is not tampering with the list in any way. This is simply returning the values that is in the list in the tail. So if the tail was stored under a saved variable name, we would still have the intact list in that variable. 
So if lists are stacks, and we understand how to get the head of the stack, how do you add on to the stack? That's easy, using a double colon. So let's do that now. If I have the values 1, and I want to add that to a list, I can do the double colon and an empty list. That will create a 1 in list. But if I already have a list of 2, 3, 4, it still works and still adds the 1 in front of it. However, this still sticks to the requirements that the numbers you add in or the values you add into the list must be of the same type of the list itself. You are not restricted either to adding just one value to the list at a time. So we can create a list by doing this. adds all of the lists into itself because it's one into the list two into the list three into the list four into the list five into the empty list so then that just compresses all of the numbers together into one list another method of adding to a list is to add entire lists themselves so if we have a two we can use the at symbol to add to a list that is adding a list to a list not just a single integer value, but adding an integer list into an integer list. So if we do this again, you can add more than just individual values. So let's create a simple function using a list. What we'll have the function do is remove the head of the list and put it on to the end of the list. So let's start off with function command. Give it a name, app for append and specify that we want to accept a list as an argument. There is multiple different ways to specify the argument as being a list, but this is a simple way and it tells you that we have a head and some tail values. The identifier as H and T can be any different words you wish. H and T seem the easiest to remember though. So if we want to add values to the tail of the list, we'll need to start off with the tail. Use the at symbol to add on to any other list that we create and then take the head and add that to an empty list. So what this is doing is it's taking the head value from the list, adding it into an empty list to create a new list, and then adding all the tail values on top of this head value. As seen earlier, to add a list on the front of another list, you need to use the at symbol, and the at symbol requires two identical typed lists on either side. So the head value must be inside of a list, which is why we add it to an empty list first. So let's see what this new function we've created does when we give it a list. So we'll do app, and we'll do one, two, three, four. This should come back with the list two, three, four, one. However, as you can see before, when we created the function, we received a warning that the matches are not exhausted. This means that there is some type of list out there that will break our function. This is usually fixed by pattern matching, but pattern matching will come later. So what would happen if we used our app function with an empty list, given that the function takes a head value and some tail values? It comes up with an error. This is to do with type inference and polymorphism. What our function is wanting as an argument is a list. We don't specify what the list contains, what type of list it is, how big the list is, if it's empty. All we say is we want a list and we will do these kind of fix our function we can use list. pattern matching. Pattern matching is similar to a switch or a select case statement in a different language. It is simply looking for the appropriate input and then doing the appropriate calculations once it's found it. So in our instance we want a pattern match to an empty list. Now in this case we'll return just a one in a list. To do pattern matching, you don't end the line of the function with a semicolon. You go to the next line, create an, a pipe symbol, and then continue on with another function line, or another pattern match. In this case, we will just continue on with the function we've had before. So now when we've created the function, we don't have the warning of matches not being exhaustive. This is because we can now add in an empty list into our function and it will return something. It understands what to do with an empty list. So if we try that now, we give our list the empty list. It com comes back with the one list. Whereas again, if we give it a list of one, two, three, four, it'll come back with two, three, four, one. So it works exactly as it did. This will still work if we give it a list of one value. This works because lists can be empty, 
So if we take the head from a single value list, the five list, we end up with a head value of five and a tail of an empty list. So when we put the single value list through our function, it takes the head off, adds it to an empty list, and then adds the tail of the empty list onto the list, which would simply come back as five again. We'll have a more in-depth look at lists and pattern matching and recursion in a later video.